I'm going to introduce our speakers. So Ned Stoller is a certified assistant, assistive technology professional and agricultural engineer for Michigan Agribility and the National Agribility Project. In addition, he is an assistive technology consultant for Michigan Rehabilitation Services, fulfilling life ministries and is the developer of disabilityworkconsulting.com, on an online assistive technology resource for trades workers. Kyle is a rural health manager at the University of Georgia and works on the AgriBility program and the Farm and Ranch Stress Assistance Network. As a mechanical engineer, he has expertise in agricultural adaptive designs and fabrication. Kyle also is part of the Assistive Technology Innovation Lab at UGA, where he fabricates devices for individuals with disabilities across the lifespan. He trains community members and professionals on assistive technology solutions. Kyle is also a certified farm succession coordinator and trained in mental health first aid and QPR. So Kyle and Ned, I welcome both of you and I pass it over to you. All right, thank you, Tess. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Ned and I are excited to be able to do a repeat of this session from NTW in Washington uh, this past spring. Ned and I really enjoy getting to bounce ideas off of each other throughout the year of all the different uh, assistive technology things that we run into on the farm. And one of the questions uh, that we get asked a lot from other states is, how do you do all the installations and fabrications for your farmers uh, in Michigan and in Georgia? And so that's one of the reasons that we put this session together was to really show other service providers uh, what tools that we have out on the farm with us in order for us to be able to do installation and fabrications or even just the initial assessment uh, for the farmers that we work with. And I wanna encourage people today to, uh, if you have a question anytime during the presentation, please uh, feel free to hit the raise hand button. We'd be glad for you to unmute and ask it, um, or you can pop it in chat and we will make sure to try and monitor the chat feature as well um, and address any of those. On the screen, uh, this is these are the vehicles that both Ned and I use uh, for our for our uh, agribility programs. Uh, mine's a truck. There, it has an eight foot bed on it with a cap, and it is slap full. It looks like a clown car when I show up to a farm and I start pulling all the different tools out that we have, um, and it's very disorganized. Unfortunately, I know uh, wait, for wait, Ned. <laughs> wait till you see the pictures of mine with the door open. It's I don't know if. I'm proud of it or embarrassed, but it's exactly. really nice having, it's a smaller vehicle, only uh, six feet of length inside, but boy, is it nice on a rainy day or in the snow to have things thrown in and under cover and there's doors on all three sides. So it's a Ford Transit Connect that I use. The way we're going to go through this today is we're really going to look at like common tools that we have uh, in our vehicles. So that way, uh, as you're looking at what you may need in your service provider vehicle, uh, those will be something to start out with, what to get first. And then we'll go into kind of, of the more unique tools that we carry with us uh, and how we why those have come into uh, our work vehicles over the years. And then we're also going to look at ways that you can fund um, a vehicle yourself or to fund some of the tools yourself uh, for your agribility program uh, to be able to serve farmers. So this is what we started out with before we ever had a uh, site visit truck here in Georgia. And it was our site visit go bag, or what we called it. Um, and it was a bag that we just had ready to go out on an initial site visit. Uh, we we were at that point, we were having to get rental cars to go out and see the farmers. And so having this bag ready was just something we could throw into the rental car as we headed out uh, onto, the, onto the farms. And so for us, uh, we always carry gloves, safety glasses, pen and paper for doing our assessments. Um, tape measures are extremely critical for having uh, to be able to take measurements around worksite modifications or equipment modifications. Flashlights, you're going to go into a lot of dark shops sometimes. Um, and so being able to pull that flashlight out and look at the equipment that may be in that dark shop or shed uh, where they don't have electricity. And then uh, for us, a magnifying glass is extremely beneficial to have. Sometimes those uh, serial numbers that you're having to pull off of the tractors can get extremely small. And so having that with you um, or a phone, a camera on a phone can uh, magnify that as well. 
up in the top right hand corner. Uh, this is something a little unique that we carry uh, for for doing our initial assessment, and that's a force scale. Uh, so that way, when we're looking at clutches or brakes, um, or even just trying to analyze how much uh, force a farmer could apply to something, we're able to have them pull on that or uh, pull on it ourselves for like the clutch and different things. So we're looking at hand controls or um, electric actuators for modifying the tractor with. And then down on the bottom right hand side, there's an angle finder, and that's extremely critical for if you're fabricating uh, tractor step extensions or things like that. So that way you can match up the exact same angle for uh, what's already there as your new design. So here's some common items that uh, that we keep in our, our work truck here in Georgia. And we, over on the left-hand side, you'll see a bag and all the items that go inside that bag. And this was implemented for us during COVID so we could keep going out and doing uh, farm visits with, during COVID. Up in the top left, you'll see an infrared thermometer. We would always check our temperature before we went out and then check the farmer or whoever else was meeting us out there, whether that's vocational rehab um, or other providers. We don't utilize those as much anymore um, now that COVID restrictions have gone away. Uh, so we, But we still utilize a lot of other stuff in this bag, like the alcohol wipes and paper towels. That's beneficial to have. We'd always keep masks and um, booties to go over your shoes as you go into a client's house. Um, you know, that's that was good during COVID, but it's also good if you've been out in mud on their farm. You can slip those on, make sure that you're not tracking mud all over their house. Um, and then we also, uh, we have all of our staff members here uh, trained in first aid and CPR. And so we carry a CPR mask with us in case uh, someone on the site visit had um, an emergency, we could perform CPR if needed. A first aid kit, though is probably one of the most important things to carry in your agribility vehicle, whether you get hurt out there on the farm doing an installation um, or someone there on the site visit gets hurt and making sure that those stay stocked is, uh, is extremely important. And it should be the first thing that you purchase for the vehicle. Um, whether, you know, whether you're doing the installations or not, it's always good to have one out there on the farm because there's a lot of different uh, hazards that you can come into contact with. I don't know about for other states uh, across the country, but for us down here in the Southeast, wasp and hornet killer uh, is extremely uh, beneficial for the summer times when you go to get on a tractor to take measurements or something and you find that wasp nest that's um, up underneath the hood, that can be a, quite a shock. And so in order to do more work on it, you need to make sure those are killed. Um, and then for us, we also have a lot of mosquitoes down here in Georgia. And so making sure that you're ready uh, to be able to work outside all day without just getting eaten alive. Another thing uh, to always prepare yourself for in your service vehicle is to have an extra change of clothes. You never know what you're going to get into on the farm. Um, I've been out there helping uh, installing assistive technology. And the farmer asked if you can help them uh, with an abscess that they're their sheep has and then all of a sudden all the all the fluids get onto your clothes and you got a several hour drive back and so it's just nice to be able to change out of those uh those clothes and into something uh cleaner for the ride home uh, we have a picture of a phone charger here this is something to really to make sure that's critical for keeping in your vehicles you know as we travel out to these rural areas and if you're using maps and uh gps to be able to get to the farm it can burn your battery down real quick on your phone and you don't want to be stranded out without a phone. So making sure that you have the ability to charge as you're going throughout the day. And then just a few other little emergency uh, things like a, a piece of food, like a granola bar or something, just that's a stable food to keep in your vehicle. Um, and then some bottles of water as well. And then over on the right hand side, uh, we always keep a tripod with us for our work phones, so that way we can video our installations and fabrications and makes for some really neat uh, outreach and marketing materials, so that way you can do like time lapse and stuff like that. For, for us, we carry a lot of uh, tool sets in our truck. Um, just your standard 200 and something piece tool sets are extremely beneficial. You never know what you're going to run into as you're doing installations. Um, and it's good to have metric and standard on hand for the different tractors, uh, wrenches, uh, pliers, hammers, 
pretty much your typical tools that you're going to find or some it would be the first things that you're going to want to put in your your agribuilding vehicle um, make sure you have magnetic uh, tools there to be able to pick up when you drop that nut or bolt down in the engine if you're doing an installation for the farmer um, we also keep a lot of electrical tools on hand so uh, one thing we do a lot here in Georgia are rear view cameras. And so we're making modifications to the electrical system. And so having all those wire strippers uh, are, and wire cutters are something that we have in our vehicles. And calipers are something very useful to have as well. Um, so that way for the initial assessment um, or even into the installations, making sure that you you know what metal that you need to be mating up against. We also carry a lot of battery power tools, so that drills, impact drivers, angle grinders, sawzalls, um, circular saws, that's uh, something that we use every time that we're out doing an installation on a farm. Uh, and so you can find those on sale. Uh, good kit porter cables are what we use um, for Georgia. Um, and we, and if you have multiple people doing a uh, work site, uh, visits and stuff and doing the installations, it's good to have the same tool set um, for your service providers. So that way, if you need to borrow batteries and stuff like that, you all have everything that'll work together. Uh, we also carry Dremels for, for doing installations and then all your drill bits. Um, and then again, electrical connectors. Uh, blow torches is really good for when you're doing uh, the electrical work for doing the heat shrink. These little mini blow torches that you can use. And then they're also good if you're, if you do have to bend some metal, you can't get it, you know, you can get it a little bit more pliable than it would be just cold. Um, and those will do a little bit. And then always keep an assortment of uh, screws and nuts and bolts uh, in your truck. So going into uh, like for us in Georgia, we do a lot of gate modifications uh, to be able to put on automatic gate openers. And when we get out to a farm, there not many times that you're going to find a farm that just had their fencing redone, everything set perfectly in the way it should be. A lot of times we're finding 50-year-old fencing that we're working with, and the, and the posts are leaning. And with those automatic gate openers, even a little bit of sway in them can cause them to get out of tolerance and not work correctly. And so you're having to go back out there quite frequently. So we keep a lot of fencing tools um, post hole diggers, shovels, um, post pounders, and stuff like that in our trucks to be able to modify the fencing to set those automatic gate openers. Um, and then uh, have a large measuring tape. That's something that's extremely beneficial for you at looking at work site modifications because you never know, like in a barnyard, how your regular tape's going to take way too long to measure that off. So have a 100 foot tape with you. Um, keep cardboard in your trucks. The Making templates on the farm can be extremely hard sometimes, uh, or taking measurements. And when you're trying to uh, create a design for a piece of assistive technology, just being able to take a cardboard out and trace the, say, the existing steps on the tractor, um, that's extremely helpful. Or if you're trying to show what the size of something would be for a farmer, you can easily create that so that way they can see, hey, this fuel tank is going to sit in the back of my truck. It's going to be this big with the cardboard. Does that block any of your view getting to your gooseneck? Stuff like that. Um, PVC pipe is something that we carry a lot because uh, you can do a lot of rapid fabrication like that. If you've ever seen uh, Therese Wilcom with all of her rapid fabrication stuff, PVC is something that you can build a ton of assistive technology out there on the farm. Um, and so carrying a couple sticks of PVC in your truck can be extremely beneficial. And then making sure you have spare metal we get out, you know, you'll fabricate something in a shop or have a local fabricator fabricate it for you. And you get out there to the job site and the farmer may want that camera in a different position now that he actually sees where the camera is hooking up. And so having those extra pieces of metal that you can all of a sudden uh, change up the mount is, uh, is something that we keep on hand to make sure that we have available. Um, and then always have a jack with you. So in case you're having to line stuff up, you can use that, uh, especially if you're just one person out there on the farm, doesn't, don't have a second person to hold stuff. Having a jack where you can adjust where things are, uh, it's extremely beneficial for a service provider. Ned, I'll turn it over to you for the, your uh, items in your vehicle. All right. 
I have a moose guard on the front of my van or a deer guard, whatever it hits. Uh, it has spared me from needing to get the front end of my vehicle repaired and kept me on the road uh, in Michigan. And I hear Pennsylvania is maybe even worse than Michigan for car deer accidents. So that's important for me. And I always have my Stanley thermos full of coffee. It can also serve as a wheel chock to keep a trailer from rolling if you need it. I, my thermos is named Old Green Joe. And if I don't have it, my clients don't hardly recognize me. And then the black toolbox is named Soey, something of everything. And probably one of the most important things in this toolbox is zip ties. I love zip ties. They can help in a lot of ways, especially if we're doing wiring to a backup camera or something to keep the wires held safely. Um, we can go to the next slide, Kyle. So this is the inside of Soey, and I can just about replace an engine if I knew how to replace an engine with the tools that are in in Soey. It's my open end wrenches, my screwdriver set, snips, tape. I like to have extra tape along to electrical tape and good knife, some carpenter tools. And I really am in love with my multi-tool or a pliers and a pocket knife. Even if I'm just going out to do a farm site assessment and I'm not planning on doing any work at the farm, I grab Soey Old Green Joe and make sure I've got my pliers and knife because uh, it's very, very common. Even if you're trying to go through a gate in the farm and it's tied shut with some twine string, be able to pull out your knife and help open. So I would recommend that in most instances, going to do a farm assessment. So this is my, uh, what Kyle called his go bag. It's my go box. And one year ago today, I was flying out for a two week trip to Ethiopia, doing some assistive technology work there. And that was a really good experience for me to think uh, really through this exact topic of, okay, what is it that I use when I'm on a farm and doing projects? What do I want to take along with me to have available in Ethiopia? And one of the things I realized is when I go to do a farm assessment, I have some assorted assistive technology. It's some shelves full in my shop of things that I use them for trade show items, for displays but I just try to grab some things that might be useful potentially the first time I'm going to meet a farmer. And so the robo handle, one hand grip, knee pads, step stools, uh, Velcro grip gloves, wrist hooks. And you can think about what are common items, the, the shovels with the right angle handles on them, uh, what might end up being a useful thing. And what this does for us on our farm assessments is it shows the clients that there are real practical solutions. Even if none of these things end up being exactly what they need, it starts the thought process working in their minds of what items might help them. Let me go to the next slide. This is what I ended up taking to Ethiopia in addition to the assistive technology I just showed there. Uh, the wheels, I probably wouldn't take along with me necessarily here in the States, but they were not readily available in Ethiopia, so I wanted to have them. And so this is my tool set, the wrenches. I like a really good set of drill bits is so valuable because you can work so hard trying to drill a hole with a dull bit. And so it's just, it's worth the money. I, I find pretty good prices and deals on Zorro for drill bits if you're shopping for them. Uh, I like my Milwaukee tools. They seem the cordless Milwaukee tools are quite reliable. And the impact driver is invaluable. It makes a bad carpenter look like a good carpenter. You can put screws in so well. And the strength of screws and being able to remove them easily compared to nails is pretty important. C-clamps, 
I think especially if we're working alone and you need an extra set of hands to hold things, the quick clamps and C clamps are very important also. So, so uh, we're going to go into the unique items in our vehicles now. Um, over on the left, this is um, a little bit more something that you wouldn't just normally have for tools, but it is a come along that's pretty uh, common for you to be able to get. But when you're out on the farms, uh, or in our vehicles here in Georgia, that unfortunately they're only two wheel drive. Um, and when you get out on the farm, you're gonna you're gonna need four wheel drive a lot of the time, especially after it gets rains and gets muddy. Um, and so having a way for you to be able to uh, pull yourself out is extremely critical. We've also used it for setting up pieces of assistive technology that have to be hoisted. Um, and there's nothing to be able to hoist it there with, with like a front end loader or something. Um, so we've been able to use come alongs that way. In the middle, this is something that I never carried in my vehicle um, until all of a sudden need arose. And it's a just a board with two uh, eye screws on either end. And then this high visibility nylon rope tied to it, two pieces the exact same length with uh, loops on the end of it. And what I can do with that is I can take those loops and hook them onto uh, the pins on an implement and then walk that board out 20 feet and put it there on the ground. And it creates two parallel lines for the farmer to be able to back up to their implement they're hooking up. Um, I had a farmer who uh, had some vision issues where um, if he did not have a point of reference, out on the farm, he was not able to hook up to his equipment. He couldn't get close enough with his three-point link arms um, in order to hook up. And so by just adding the adding that um, the those high visibility lines on the ground for him, he was able to get within um, a few inches there of where he needed to be. And so he was able to then hook up his um, lines and, or hook up his implement. And what that did was really for us, we knew we were going to, asked for a rear view camera from vocational rehab um, but this allowed us to justify the fact that we needed to pay a little bit more and make sure the rear view camera had grid lines on it because it was then able to show that yes grid lines do work for him um, because sometimes his eyes will convert stuff will converge with his eyes um, even even like lines on the road and stuff and so being able to show that the, the lines would not converge and they would give him a good point of reference um, to, to hook up to implements was allowed to us to be able to justify a higher piece of equipment. So I just always carry that with me. So that way, um, if we we're doing a backup camera and we want to justify being able to spend a little bit more for grid lines on that backup camera, I can throw that out there. Over on the right-hand side, um, this flex tubing was... Um, it was used mostly in the uh, manufacturing industry to deliver air and stuff to pieces of equipment, but the assistive technology industry really um, took it and ran with it on different mounts that you're able to do for iPads, um, uh, communication devices, and different things like that. Um, but we use it while we're actually taking measurements for hand controls for tractors that we then fabricate. And so what we can do with that clamp is clamp it onto uh, the clutch pedal or the brake pedal and we can then bend it to where it's in a comfortable position for the farmer to be able to use. And then we can easily t take it off of that pedal and then lay it down on our truck, take all the measurements we need to. It's uh, a lot more effective than just trying to take a tape measure and then measure out uh, where we think the best angle would be for the farmer to use. And so that actually gives them um, something to hold on to, make sure it feels good, feels like it's going to be a good position, and then go through the movement with them using that. Um, to make sure the angle of travel with that clutch pedal um, is not going to interfere with anything. So that I would that would be something I would really encourage you to make sure to add to your agility vehicle if you're looking at hand controls. Hey Kyle, when you're doing hand controls, do you mm -hmm. usually bend them right there on site and install them, or is it something you'll measure and then fabricate in the shop and come back later with? We've done it either way. Um, but most of the time we like to fabricate it in the shop if we can, just because we know we're going to have a much stronger, um, a much stronger hand control than using a conduit or something like that out there on the farm that we're able to bend, which is one of those, uh, benders on site. So most of the time we, we take all the measurements, um, there at the very first initial site visit, if we know that hand controls are going to be a thing, and then we send it to our shop to fabricate it there, um, 
just with welding and stuff and using their larger bender for pipes. I have a small hydraulic bender. I Now I'm thinking this should have been in this presentation. The Life Essentials hand control levers are three quarter inch solid bar stock, round bar. And my bender just does a beautiful job. So I'm able to have the farmer right in the seat and we can, they have the socket that clamps onto the pedal. We can put the lever in and have the farmer pull on it and keep tweaking it until it's just right. And I know Hubert originally taught me uh, using a torch and you could use the draw bar from the tractor to, you know, heat up the bar and bend it. I was always nervous about that burning myself or just having that hot metal up in the, in the cab. So with this hydraulic bender that I have, it's small enough. It's the size of a toolbox. I can carry it pretty easily uh, out to the farm. And so if, if anyone's going to be installing hand control levers, that's something that I would recommend as a small hydraulic bender. It's like a hand pumped press. Oh, nice. Well, I know what I'm asking the university for for Christmas now. So I, we can add that to our, that way we can add that to our truck and be able to do the hand controls right there on site. That's awesome. You'll have to send me a link to where I can buy one afterwards. Uh, over on the left hand side is, like I mentioned, we do a lot of rear view cameras here in Georgia. Um, and you can get good connections with those um, terminal crimps. Uh, but what I like to do when we're making any modifications is I really like to go back and solder all the connections to make sure that it doesn't ever come apart. Um, and then you have to go back out and retrace wires and stuff like that. So uh, we carry a soldering iron with us, um, but we have to, you know, we do have to plug into somewhere. Uh, on the in the barn to be able to use that there on the job site uh, with we do carry an inverter with us um, so that way because our our uh, work vehicles here in Georgia are not very new um, they don't have the outlets like some of the newer vehicles come with a regular 120 outlet but uh, having this inverter we're able to connect directly to the battery um, and then have us an outlet there it's just not strong enough to run some things like the soldering iron but it'll charge all of our tool batteries for us so that way um, if they run down while we're out there doing jobs, we can be able to charge them up or charge a cell phone, which is extremely nice as well. Um, and then over on the right-hand side, we carry a, a backup camera with us too. Uh, so that way, if we're near to test anything out for the farmer, um, we can do that there right there on site before during our initial assessment to make sure that the backup camera is going to be something that would be beneficial for them. Here on the left, this is a uh, auger, a two-man auger, and for for us, as we do so many of those automatic gate openers, uh, and we're setting new posts or new posts in the ground that we've just decided to start carrying augers with us because it sure m makes getting through the Georgia clay a lot easier than having to use those post hole diggers. Um, and so, if this if we have two people there and we're able to get it into the area that we're working in. Uh, that's really nice to carry in our trucks. And we got that off of university surplus. So it didn't cost us anything to add to our vehicles. Uh, it was actually, uh, it came from the anthropology department. So no telling how many bones that it's dug up over the years before it came to us to start working on the farm. And then on the right hand side, uh, this is a, a receiver hitch, uh, vice mount that we have gone, that we've gotten in the past couple of years. And it, allows us to really up our game here in Georgia because if we're making um, on-site modifications to something, we're able to clamp it down there. Uh, it is heavy to set up to begin with, uh, but once you have it in that receiver, it, it really allows you to be able to do a lot of things there for cutting, uh, drilling, different things like that. All right, here's my cluttered vehicle packed full of things and right on top of it, you see what looks like a bent pipe. Well, that's the end of what they call a Uper scooper. And in the upper peninsula, you might get snowed in. Kyle's talking about using the come along to pull out of the mud. Uh, we might have to pull out of the snow in the upper peninsula of Michigan. Uh, but a, a snow scoop is something that we want to keep in our vehicle at certain times of the year for sure. You can see a small drill press that's easy to put in and out. My eyeballs are crooked. 
I'm not the best fabricator in the world. I can make things work. Uh, but if I have to drill a hole through a piece of square steel tubing, it never comes out the other side straight when I'm using a hand drill. And so if, if there's something like if I want to make a pivoting arm that swings straight, <clears throat> I need to take the drill press along with me. I have each of my toolboxes is for different things. I have my cutoff box that has my saws, all my cutoff wheels, angle grinders. And then I have my electrical box that has extra wire, wire coating, the little blowtorch Kyle showed I use for soldering and uh, my electrical tester, all the electrical tools, wire strippers. And then I have my drill box that has the drill bits and all of the accoutrements for the drills. Uh, depending on the project, I might take along some extra wheels. This particular trip that I was on, I think we were setting up, uh, well, I was visiting a commercial fisherman and looking at how to put grab bars on a commercial fishing boat, which was a new experience for me. So I didn't know what I was going to get into. And that always makes me anxious. I, <laughs> I take my Bible and I pray because some of these trips, I don't know what I'm getting into and I just have to take something of everything. Um, but then we were helping a man build a portable conveyor so that he could use it to fill his grain drill with oat seed early in the spring. And so we used a engine hoist, a cherry picker you might call it, and made a strap that could lift the, the conveyor and he could roll it around his shop to wherever his grain drill was parked. And so we had some extra wheels along and, and hardware for that on this unique trip. And go to the next slide. Okay. I listened to a Georgia guy once. You've heard of Zig Ziglar, Kyle? I have. Oh, yeah. All right. So as agribility staff, we're kind of salesmen. Even though we're not selling products, we're selling ideas. And something that Zig Ziglar said is, if you don't use the stuff you're selling, how are you going to ever convince somebody else to use it? So when I'm out working, whether it's in my own shop or out on the farms, I use the things and it saves my back. It's nice to sit on uh, the picture on the left is an adjustable height work seat and can use a ratchet wrench or a drill to raise and lower it for ergonomic positioning. The impact tools instead of ratchet wrenches to save your arms doing a lot of work there on the right. Next slide. I stand on floor cushions and I use an adjustable height roll around uh, cart. So handy. And if the adjustable height table is used in conjunction with an adjustable height seat, you don't have to work on the floor. You don't have to work in the dirt and down on the ground. If you do need to kneel down, it's really nice to have knee pads or the cushion to kneel on. And Anytime I go to do an installation project and I don't take my hardware along, I regret it. I'm always running to town for a bolt or a nut. And it's so convenient just to have a few of lots of different sizes. Uh, basically, from half inch to quarter inch size bolts. I like nylock nuts. And usually I, I have from one inch up to three inch or four inch size along with me. And if I have that along, it's pretty rare that I have to go running for, for hardware. Just depends on the farm. Some farms are very well equipped, but we can't rely on that. I don't anyway. And then what kinds of projects am I doing installations on? I'm pretty leery about uh, trusting people standing on my welds. So if it's if it's man lifts, man lifts or custom fabricated steps, I just take into account my skill set. Make sure that you stay within your your abilities. Um, installing wagon hitches, we're putting 
a couple of brackets on the frame of the wagon and for holding up the wagon tongue. If that fails, it's not going to be hazardous to somebody immediately. It might be uh, an irritation, but not hazarding somebody's life or limb. And so if I'm doing installations for that, I have a small welder that I can run off of a generator and I talked to this farmer. He knew I was coming. He was going to have all of his wagons up by the shop so that I could help him do the installations. And when I got there, they were all three out in the middle of the field. And so I was thankful that I had my generator along with me and was able. Uh, the other thing is a can of paint. The farmers might say that they'll take care of painting things, but I like if I'm welding something on to have a coat of paint on it before I leave so that uh, the rust doesn't start working on something that I've welded and installed. The hitch itself for these stay fast hitches is bolted onto the draw bar of the tractor. So the, the wagon is not being pulled by the weight of my welds. If it was, I would be concerned about that, but it's, it's bolted with grade eight bolts onto the draw bar of the tractor and then pulled by a hitch pin in the hitch. So a little bit about how kind of we got our stuff. I'm gonna, hold on. Okay. I'm going to interrupt one more time, Kyle. Sorry. No, I put good. in the chat a link for the pipe bender. All right. Thank you. Um, so we want to go in. If this is something that you're looking for for your agribility program or if you're another service provider um, of how you could start getting tools for your uh, installations and fabrications and then, you know, how you could even look at vehicles. Um, donations or something that you could really look at uh, farm bureaus a lot of times have uh, vehicles for their agents to drive and then after they're done um, they go to get auctioned off and so that could be a way that you're able to look and try and see if a uh, a farm bureau office or the state farm bureau could give could give the agribility program a vehicle um, tool donations from companies are something that are pretty easy to do uh, for a few small tools you can go to a Lowe's or a Home Depot and they'll give you um, about $20 or so to be able to use for your uh, organization and you can get at least one tool with that. Private individuals is another great way to get donations for tools. Um, a lot of times when people pass away and there's a large tool uh, collection that the family then doesn't know what to do with or the newer generation doesn't have... Um, the skills to be able to use all those tools, they're looking for a way to get rid of them. And so uh, a lot of times advertising just by word of mouth or in the local classifieds in your newspaper can really bring in a lot of different tools. Um, and if you're with a nonprofit organization or a, a university, you could be able to uh, give them a tax deductible uh, donation form for that, for those tools they donate to you. Um, we've had to, we've had to actually turn away tools uh, sometimes because they're, you know, they're just, they're too big for the for the for our program and stuff, but people really like to be able to give the the program something tangible um, and be able to keep the legacy of that person too going and helping others. Um, here in Georgia, we charge for our installations if the farmer is working with vocational rehab um, on some things. We're able to charge VR because there are no other uh, companies out there who can do the installations for the assistive technology on certain things, and so. Um, it really, we're not, we're not charging much for it. It's enough to cover our gas and our time um, and then a little extra for parts and stuff. But we are able to use that um, money to be able to purchase some tools if we need it down, uh, down the road. And we also do fundraisers uh, for, to be able to fund some tools and then to be able to fund our loan library that we have of assistive technology for the farmers. Uh, and so we actually sell food items that are that have a logo for the university on them and we get, uh, you know, we're making a portion of that money. And so for jams and jellies, uh, and salsa, we sell, that's been a really nice income stream. Uh, GoFundMe is another way to look. And I think Ned, you do a golf tournament in Michigan. Is that right? A local fraternity? Yeah, they do a golf outing, a hog roast and a beef preview cattle show. Nice. Yeah, that's the, I know they bring in good money every year to be able to help the agribility program there for you. And so that's another thing that you could really look at is getting involved with uh, 
local organizations who might want to help with fundraisers for you. Um, for federal surplus is another great place to look for tools and then also vehicles. So my work truck is actually a USDA vehicle um, and back uh, the USDA would have to get rid of vehicles at a certain uh, mileage and then turn them over to universities uh, to be able to use it. So mine is a federal surplus vehicle. Uh, and that could be a way that other your university could look at getting federal surplus or a nonprofit can get federal surplus um, for a tools or for a vehicle. And I mean, the truck only had 40,000 miles on it. So it's got you know many more years of being able to go out on farms for us. State surplus is another thing to look at. Um, and again, you can get state surplus for nonprofit organizations as well. Um, and they have a lot of tools and they have vehicles sometimes on there as well. Uh, university surplus. Like I mentioned earlier, I got the auger off of that. I've gotten our shovels, our post hole diggers. Um, so again, we're not having to pay for stuff and we're able to keep acquiring more tools that are extremely beneficial for us. And then our, our program directors, if you're with the university, can sometimes get salary savings to be able to purchase toolkits. Um, and so we've got uh, all of our battery powered quarter cable tools using that because they're funded. Uh, our project directors are funded off of grants and so they're not having to use state funds and so they're able to utilize a few of those state funds to be able to purchase stuff like tools um, that we're able to utilize to serve the farmers. One of the big things that has been a blessing to our clients is farmer to farmer donations. When a farmer retires or no longer or if he passes away, his family will often call and be willing to donate the equipment back assistive technology that can then work for another farmer. And so that's been a big blessing. And it's situations like that where I might get involved if, if the farmer wants to do their own, like they can install this themselves. But I feel like I want to be there uh, when they're putting a lift on the tractor to be of assistance and guidance and help make sure it's done safe. So that's a lot of times the situations that I'll get into. If at all possible, I like the farmer to work with me and that it's a interactive activity between the, the two of us. He's the one that's going to be using it, he or she, and to make sure that it's done in a way that's going to satisfy them and be helpful to them. It's really valuable. This is a life essentials lift that the farmer who received it only had it for less than a year and he passed away. And about the same time we had another client that needed it and we were able to, I was able to go and remove it from one truck, drive it a few miles across the state and have it installed on another. And so we're, reuse reusing this expensive assistive technology that can be a blessing to more than one person that way i love facebook marketplace and garage sales and and craigslist there's things that can be a blessing this powered wheelbarrow on the left is a two thousand dollar item that i got for three hundred dollars I had to do a little bit of repair on the the control switch. Just wasn't working well. It was shorting out and draining the battery. Uh, but we got a new battery and fixed the switch. And it's basically a walker, an outdoor walker for this man with muscular dystrophy. And he can carry firewood and give his daughter a ride in a wheelbarrow that he never would have been able to do before. And uh, lifts the wheelchair lifts for the back of a vehicle at least here in michigan we can routinely find them for three to five hundred dollars in pretty good condition lots of things like that uh, where i have not had good success is use wheelchairs and so i think that i've really backed away from taking wheelchair donations or getting used ones it seems like the batteries cost $600. They're always, the batteries are always shot when somebody donates a wheelchair and you can spend $600. Uh, 
for a set of batteries only to find out that there's a problem with the controller, which is another $1,500, and it can get complicated real quick. Um, so we can go to the next slide. Ned, we got a question in the chat from Emily uh, that says, when, are, when you find things on exchanges and such, are your clients buying the item or are you getting uh, reimbursed? Emily, are you talking about when one farmer donates it to another? Do you want to just unmute and ask your question? Yeah, no. So like the things that you're buying on garage sales, Craigslist auctions oh. or Facebook, ex like marketplace <laughs> exchanges, are you purchasing yeah. Ned? Because, you know, in, in Nebraska, we're primarily working with Voc Rehab for most of our clients. So yeah. anything that we buy prior to getting sent into Voc Rehab won't come back and we won't get reimbursed. Right. For it. So I was just curious how you were doing that. There's three ways. One way is I see something that's a really good deal and I think somebody's going to need that someday and I buy it and put it on my shelf and then eventually somebody needs it and they'll buy it from me. Or um, the donations that we have coming in for agribility, uh, I'll get reimbursed, operate on reimbursement. Or Sometimes uh, we are, since I'm buying it, this, this is my horrible bookkeeping, Emily. <laughs> I, I buy stuff and put it on my shelf. And there are times that eventually um, it becomes a custom adapted item that the farmer didn't buy in advance. And so voc rehab will then pay for it from me as a new item for a client so that's how it works here and it's kind of something that i do as an independent contractor that would be different probably if i worked directly for a university or agent agency the capstone projects that we work on are sometimes a blessing and sometimes a curse, but when they work out, they're really great. Uh, this one here was an adaption using a garage door opener to open and close a gate, remote controlled, and it worked really, really good. And uh, so that was a, a huge blessing for the farmer. There's other times that I spend a lot of time working with a capstone group and it ends up not working at all. And I have about 10 of those projects in my shop that I'm gonna get to someday and make them actually work. They'll probably be there when I die. So we'd, we'd also like to know if you're, if you have an agribility vehicle, you know, what are, what are things that you carry? Because we're constantly adding to ours. If there are any tools out there that are helpful for you, um, please share. Uh, and if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to pop in the chat or unmute yourself or we'll answer anything honestly. Um, as you saw Ned uh, tell you how he does all of his purchasing, uh, Ned's got a part of gold and really just wants to be able to help the farmers. And so he'll, you know, we're, we're glad to be able to answer anything that you might have. Curiosity killed the cat. And a lot of times you see something I'm sure you do it too, Kyle. You, you see something on the shelf at Home Depot and you think, oh man, that's a great tool. I'll bet that'll be useful someday. And buy oh, it and yeah. put it in your toolbox. <laughs> Can't help it. For tool junkies. <laughs> yes, Harbor Freight's one of the worst places for me to go into. Yeah. I don't know if, if uh, yeah. other places across the country have them. <laughs> but... How do you each handle? liability sure um, yeah so for us with the university when we're doing installations and stuff um all, our university policy covers us for any of the installations that because we are state staff um that they, they said that we were fine to do it um 
and then but if it's like Ned mentioned, if it's critical for someone's life, then we're going to go get, such as welding. We're going to go get an outside certified welder to come in to do that. But we have a machine shop there where we make all of the uh, hand controls, and we have a machinist down there on who is university staff making. Um, a lot of the assistive technology for us that's covered under that state insurance policy and we've never had any problems with that. I have a general liability policy through Farm Bureau Insurance that's the same as uh, if somebody was selling and repairing farm equipment. So I, I think they used a policy similar to a, a equipment dealership would have and it's just based on the amount of revenue annually so it ends up not being as expensive as I thought it would be. Um, but then just staying with within my skill set and my scope, that's my liability. And do no harm, right? I think it's the, the ATP code of ethics. It's just love your neighbor as yourself and do good work. So another thing that we do in Georgia before – when they are becoming a client, when we go out on the initial assessment, we have them sign um, some liability release forms that uh, the university has a, has us carry with us to be able to sign. And it just um, it helps to cover a little bit more of if we're doing any modifications out there on the farm that they're not going to hold us liable if anything happens. Um, but we do have engineers on staff who are looking over all the uh, fabrications and stuff that are being done by the university. Thank you for that question, though. That was great. Uh, Emily put in the chat that uh, here in Nebraska, it's a, a bit different because our quotes, we gather cover installation of items, um, but they always carry mutt boots, cleaning materials for the boots, uh, tape measure, fish scale to weigh items for clients that have weight restrictions, phone for photos, and a clipboard and pen for taking notes. And uh, all of their clients do sign a liability form through Easter Seals. So Thanks, Emily. Um, it sounds like it's a lot of what we carry in our in our site visit bags that we take out for initial uh, in initial assessment. The majority of the installations here in Michigan, if it's through Michigan Rehab Services, they are paid for by another vendor. Another vendor does that. It would be the clients who don't qualify for Michigan Rehab that we have to design something by what we can find on their farm or uh, if there's a a donated item that needs adapted specifically for that person that I would become involved or if it's kind of a new invention or a product development that we want to, to test the concept and work with a farmer on that, that I would be involved. But most of the standard items like the, the cameras and the steps and things like that are installed by a ven another vendor. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to email either Ned or I. We're glad to help out in any way that we can answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Kyle. And thank you, Ned. That was a great presentation. Um, I did put a link in the chat for an evaluation. If Before you leave, everybody could just click on that link and just answer a few questions for us so we can continue to improve our session. Um, and we hope you will come again uh, next month.